Hey folks, nice to see you back on my channel. As you might know, I did so far some videos about Keycloak and some videos about Quarkus. And this time I thought, hey, why not combining both together and do a video about how to secure your Quarkus server with Keycloak? Securing your Quarkus service with uh, the authentication by your Keycloak server is really simple. You just need some extension configuration on the Quarkus side and of course a proper configured Keycloak server. So let's dig into the code. So this is uh, the extension you need on the Quarkus side, the Quarkus OIDC extension, OpenID Connect. Uh, you don't need a special Keycloak uh, adapter, uh, Keycloak extension, just plain OpenID Connect. Uh, that's enough, and uh, that's what Quarkus is providing for you. Uh, you need some uh, configuration of this extension, uh, the authorization server URL where the Keycloak server is available. It's um, from me at localhost uh, realms. I have created a Quarkus realm with a Quarkus service client. And if you have a look into uh, our realm, just regular Quarkus Realm, nothing special. I have uh, the Quarkus service. It's a regular confidential client, nothing, nothing special configured. Um, just have to be here. Uh, I have two roles. I have an admin role and a user role in my um, realm. That's what we need for uh, this demo. And we have two users, an admin user and the John, the regular user. And as you might expect, the regular user just have the assigned role user and the administrator has uh, additionally the admin role configured. That's it on the Keycloak side. Back to Quarkus. So we have uh, the Quarkus realm, uh, the server URL and the client ID is the Quarkus service because uh, the service itself just receives uh, authenticated calls and the server itself doesn't need to make a call somewhere else as bearer only and we don't need to specify any secrets or such things that's enough so we have a user's resource which um, should be only accessible for regular users so the user must be authenticated to have a user role named user uh, it rolls allowed annotation is uh, standard Java X annotation security annotation. And um, yeah, that the user can have a user, uh, a role user. The user has to be authenticated. Otherwise, the user can't have this, uh, this role, of course. And um, when the user uh, has the user role, um, we're executing this uh, method. In this method, we're uh, accessing the security identity object, um, which we inject in our uh, service, in our user resource. And the security identity is such thing like security uh, context of, of other um, application servers. And it provides um, the principle. And um, at the principle, we also can get um, the name from. So we should return a username object uh, with the actual username in our case and uh, yeah let's try this out i have our uh, http client uh, first off uh, um, i'll do a request to the endpoint without any uh, authentication and authorization header and um, should return a 401 because we don't provide any authentication information at all. And if we send this, we get back a 401 unauthorized from our um, Quarkus server, as expected. And um, now I'm um, getting a user token. Uh, first, I want, uh, want to have the regular user. This is John, has the password John. Um, I do a request to the Keycloak server. I will get back um, the access token and I will use this access token in um, the uh, authentication method of this uh, call. I enable it again and now I will send it to the Quarkus service and the Quarkus service will respond as expected with the username John. 
in our case. So that works. Back to uh, the code. We saw the security identity, get the principal, get the name of the principal. It's a username in our case. And then we have the admin resource. And the admin resource, it's uh, again in Chuck's RS endpoint. And this time it's only allowed for admin role. So not the user role, but the admin role. And uh, we will get uh, back some other information. And if I now call the admin endpoint, admin, with the um, regular user token from the John user, uh, you will see we'll get back a 403. It's forbidden because we are authenticated as John and John is just a user, don't have the user, uh, the role admin. Uh, we are not allowed to access this endpoint. And um, now we have to create an access token of the admin user. And with this access token, we can execute our endpoint of the admin request. And now we get back uh, the a map of the preferred username, which is admin and the subject, which is 7D40, which is the um, keyclock internal um, ID of this user. So let's look at a look in the code. And this time we don't use um, the security identity like in the user resource, but uh, we are accessing the JSON web token directly. The JSON web token per default injected is the access token. And um, you can inject also the, the JSON web token directly into your resource and uh, use it, access it. And it's uh, the subject, it's just getting the subject from the JSON web token. The subject is a reserved claim. Uh, that's because uh, that's why uh, there's this method get subject. And uh, the preferred username is uh, not a um, standard claim. So you have to access it uh, with a name, get claim, preferred username and then you will get back um, what's in your access token at the claim preferred username, what's actually the username, of course. And that's the, um, the response preferred username admin and the subject. So you can use the JSON web token or the security identity directly in your resources and access the information. And the methods, the endpoints itself are secured by add roles allowed. Um, what if you need more information than just in the um, access token is given? So there's another uh, configuration option. Um, you can set um, the Quarkus OIDC authentication user info required to true. Then uh, Quarkus will call additionally for every received access token. Uh, the user info endpoint of Keycloak or your used OIDC uh, server and get more information of the server from the user info endpoint. And uh, you can inject um, a method, um, an object user info, which is a part of uh, the Quarkus OIDC uh, package we added and uh, access this information from the user info, uh, getting some um, attributes from the user info, um, like the subject again, like the email. And um, yeah, that's uh, available from um, info, not me, but info. Again, roles allowed user. And if I now call info, I will get back some more information um, from the admin. The email address is the admin at localhost because we're still um, authenticated as uh, the admin and we get the subject again. And this is the information Quarkus received from the user endpoint. Um, again, if we switch to um, our user John and get the actual access token calling the user info, we get the John at localhost and the subject of the user John. So um, you have this additional um, option to get infos of your uh, current user. 
This was quick and easy how to secure your Quarka server with a proper Keyclock authentication. And of course, as always, there are more configuration options available. I put a link to the video description where you can find all these options. And um, of course, you can run um, your Quarka service as always in JVM mode and in native mode. So you can have proper authentication also with uh, native binary. If you like this video, just give me some uh, thumbs up. You know, thumbs up are the currency on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of my other videos. Uh, next videos, of course, Quarkos and Keycloak and perhaps some testing of both together. Yeah, stay tuned. Hope to see you next time. Bye bye.